Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro Channel. In this video we're gonna review the Boeing 737 Next Generation series developed by iFly Simsoft. I'm gonna tell as much as possible in these 15 min minutes we have, so we better get started. So we first get started with the exterior of the aircraft. Uh, as you've seen in the introduction there was a standard uh, orange livery for iFly. Uh, the aircraft comes with uh, all these orange liveries for all aircraft types. But of course on the Flight 1 file library and on FSIM you can da uh, download uh, very nice repaints as well. So this is an example of the WestJet 737-600. And this version doesn't have winglets, it's an option available in the uh, configuration manager. And as you can see as well this aircraft has eyebrows and that's an uh, option you can uh, choose if you want to. So there's a great list of options available. You can select uh, winglets or eyebrows, uh, anything you want. Uh, you won't have any problems with that. Now this is an example of the uh, uh, livery at night. As you can see the lights look uh, pretty nice uh, and also the cabin uh, lights are illuminated. And these landing lights are very impressive as well. I have to say I use an add-on for these spotlights, but the uh, reflection, f reflection of the uh, landing lights on the uh, surface of the aircraft look pretty impressive. And especially if you're flying through fog, uh, this looks very nice as well. So we have the beautiful landing lights and also the taxi lights of course. Uh, we can switch them on now. And the taxi lights is a little bit less bright, but uh, as you can see it's very well animated in this uh, aircraft. So we're now going to listen to an example of the engine startup and the uh, loud noise you hear in the background is the APU which is well, just as noisy as in real. So as you can hear the uh, shutdown sound of the APU is very realistic as well. A great uh, thing about this add-on is that you can choose the different kind of engine types available for the 737. Because every airline has different kind of engines. So that's a great option and I have to say the engine sounds are very very realistic. Just like in real. So we're now going to take a look at the cockpit and the a basic look at the systems of the aircraft. This is the uh, 2D panel, it has a 4x3 version but also a 16x9 for uh, widescreen. As you can see you can choose whether you want to be in the captain seat or the first officer seat and also you can display all your screens and uh, your overhead panel and your FMC. So it has a great amount of options. But of course, the most important thing about this add-on is its virtual cockpit. As you can see, this looks just as in real. Uh, if you have been in a 737 cockpit before, you will have about the same view when you stand in the cockpit door like this. Everything is modeled in 3D, about 95% of the knobs is clickable. Uh, the sounds are realistic, you can uh, easily click them. And as you can see, the yoke and everything moves very smoothly and fine. It's an absolute pleasure to fly. Uh, it has a few frame uh, hits of course, but uh, on a strong computer you will have no problems at, well at all. So this is the view from the captain's seat. As you can see you have a good overview of all these screens and also of the overhead panel up here. And well, just take a look at the overhead panel. It looks absolutely amazing. Uh, you have all those knobs modeled in 3D, also the IRS panel above. 
well this add-on is uh, very realistic because of all these 3d objects also the eyebrow windows you can hide them or not not it's just an option available in the configuration manager and also those uh, radios and the throttles modeled in 3d and of course you can view all the 2d panels you want So this is the cockpit at night and as you can see it looks just beautiful, all those little lights and these screens. Uh, it might be a little dark sometimes I have to say, but you can turn on the panel lights whenever you want to, so you have a nice gloom orange light effect in the cockpit. So now it's time to see the aircraft in action. Uh, this is an uh, example of the 737-800 and this is the SkyTeam livery of KLM. So this is the cockpit of the 737-800. As you can see it looks exactly the same because all the cockpits of the next generation are typically the same. Um, right here we have the MCP panel. As you can see you can select anything you want. You can select altitudes in 100 and uh, thousands. Um, also the speed and the course everything also we have here our screens and you can select the different modes uh, right here which is uh, very handy uh, uh, for flying uh, we can also select the range so there's a great list of options you can view the stations around us the waypoints well, it takes too long much time uh, the airports and also our position and all the data of the FMC route so it is a very advanced cockpit as you can see, also the flight management computer works very uh, good. Also we can increase and decrease the brightness of all our screens as you can see here. And also we can uh, view the screens uh, separately and switch off a particular screens as you can see here. And right here on the right we can uh, view the engine data as you can see and also our systems and with the system page we can check our flight controls. Another fun and small detail is the ground proximity warning test. Uh, with this little button over here we can run this uh, test and uh, you, will, you will hear all the audio sounds and also the visible warnings of the ground proximity warning system. Light low. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Think rate. Pull up. Don't think. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flap. Light slope. Bank angle. Bank angle. So now it's time to really see this aircraft in action. I have to configure the FMC or something. I'm just going to take off this bird. So we're going to arm the auto throttle and we're going to advance the thrust levers to 40% and 1. And now we're going to hit the TOGA button. Uh, so we're going to be taking off and we're ready to roll. So as you may have heard the uh, gear up sound is very realistic, it's just the same sound as in real and uh, also the trim sounds and if you just compare a real aviation or real cockpit video with taking off you will see you will 
make about the same movements with the yoke as they do in real. So I think this aircraft flies realistic. Of course I can't determine what the reality is, but I have to say it feels realistic. It, you really feel you are controlling a big aircraft and it's really a pleasure to fly. So if we get engage the autopilot, the autopilot works very fine as well. Uh, we're going to just make a turn right here now. Select like to 30 degrees bank and make a right turn. And as you can see it goes very smoothly. And um, it maintains its speeds and altitudes correctly. So the FMC and the autopilot of this aircraft work very fine. There are a few minor issues which will be solved in the next feature pack. Also the TCAS has a little issue when flying on the VATSIM network. We get an, uh, a warning uh, as soon as an aircraft joins your session. But these are all minor issues but it's really flyable. Of course the big question about this add-on is the frames per second. Um, I have to say it runs very smoothly on my system uh, even at a heavy add-on airport like this mega airport Amsterdam and heavy clouds of real environment extreme and while flying on the VATSIM network I had about 30 frames per second in this 3D model virtual cockpit so they really did an astonishing job uh, it's frame rate friendly on good computers on all the computers I don't know really uh, you might uh, not really be able to fly at heavy uh, scenery like this but on small airports with clear weather you will be fine I think um, of course you can also fly in a 2D panel if you want to so on good and uh, new systems with uh, GTX uh, 460 on my system it works very very well So in my opinion this add-on is really the way to go for Flight Simulator 2004. Of course the PMDG Next Generation X is for Flight Simulator X. But this add-on is for Flight Simulator 9 and Flight Simulator 10. So this is the perfect alternative for Flight Simulator 9. So at the end of the video I want to take a look at the landing of this 737-800 travel service. Landing at Vienna Airport in Austria at night. Approaching minimums. Minimums. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. So guys, this is the end of the review. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is definitely a product I would choose if you owe FS9. Of course, for FSX, I can determine whether to choose the PMDG or the iFly 737. They both have their positive and negative points, I think. Um, but if you owe FS9, you definitely have to go for this product. It's a great add-on and they have great servers on their support forums. 
So thanks for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe for more content on this channel. And leave a comment below. And thanks for watching.